Hello again, Year 3, and welcome to Week 5 of the last summer term. It's been a really good week. We've had some children back in to class for two days a week. Um, so if you're one of those, it was really lovely to see you. Um, but these are the video lessons to help you uh, do the lessons that, uh, to add to the lessons that you've observed, that you've been into, or if you're not coming back to school, maybe, um, so you can keep involved with what we've been doing in school. So, this week's lessons are all about cartoons and using cartoons um, to express emotion. So we've been doing, we're focusing on art and these lessons are all about the cartoons and drawing cartoons. So first question then is, what is a cartoon? Pause the video and talk to an adult or talk to someone about what you think a cartoon is. Pause it now. Welcome back. So there's some examples of cartoons below. And cartoons are a simple drawing showing the features of its subject, usually in quite a humorously exaggerated way. So, for example, if you've got a cartoon of someone um, with, with quite large ears on a cartoon, they'll be absolutely massive. Um, if someone has a big nose, their nose will be um, exaggerated and much, much larger. Um, so it's a type of illustration, possibly animated. Sometimes cartoons move, as we've all seen um, typical cartoons. It's typically non-realistic or semi-realistic. Uh, if you remember last week, we looked at a cartoon um, called Inside Out. And although it was, it was semi-realistic, it was based on, on kind of real people doing real things. Although inside the head, obviously, that was very much more cartoonish in terms of it being non-realistic. So. Can you name a popular cartoon? What kind of cartoons do you actually like? Talk to the person next to you. Um, obviously there's three here that you can name straight away. Um, so uh, pause the video and talk to the person next to you, see how many cartoons you can name. Welcome back. So cartoons are a form of illustration, they're a form of artwork, and they are a fantastic way of, of, of producing art. And we're going to look at doing some of those this week. Can you name any famous cartoonists? If you think about some famous people who've drawn cartoons or drawn cartoon illustrations that you'd really like to learn more about. Well, the obvious one, of course, is our old friend Quentin Blake. And there's a picture of him that he drew of himself, a self-portrait in cartoon format. Um, Quentin Blake has illustrated loads and loads of books and his style is very, very familiar to us. Here's some other Quentin Blake cartoon pictures. And as you can see, they look fairly simple until you start looking at them really carefully and you realise just how detailed and how special they really are and how much work has gone into producing each one of them. Each one of them is a work of art in its own right. We all know this one, having spent a term reading the BFG. So what you're going to do is you're going to look at Quentin Blake's life and produce an information sheet um, to show the key parts of his life and some key information about him. Now, if you've already been in class and you've done this lesson in class, then rather than produce an information sheet, I want you to actually produce a timeline of the key moments in Quentin Blake's life. So to help you do that, um, you can use this, this video link below, this, this link below, which goes to Quentin Blake's own website. And he's put on there a timeline of all the key things that he thinks were important in his life. And he's illustrated them as well. So pause the video, go and look at this timeline, make some notes on the key items you would want to add to either your timeline or your information text, and then come back. So I hope you enjoyed that. And here's a little bit of information about Quentin Blake that you might want to include in your information text. He was born in London in 1932 and went to Chislehurst and Sidcup Grammar School followed by national service. This was where in those days everyone had to join the army or the armed services for two years of their life when they reached 18 or 19 years old and everyone had to go and do join the army for two years and serve their nation. So he did that. In fact I believe he was in the RAF which is a flying uh, division. His drawings were first published in Punch magazine when he was only 16 years old. So it's not that much older than you are now. He studied English at Downing College at Cambridge University before going on to do a postgraduate teaching diploma uh, at the University of London. That is, he trained to be a teacher. I 
but he'd be a really good teacher. He always worked as an illustrator as well as teaching for over 20 years at the Royal College of Art, where he was part head of the illustration department. So as well as teaching um, older students, he actually spent a lot of time illustrating books and things as well. Um, he illustrated many children's books, obviously most famously the Roald Dahl books, and, and he's created much loved characters in his own right. Mr Magnolia and Mrs Armitage, for example. In addition, he's had exhibitions at the National Gallery and the British Library. He was appointed the first ever children's, post, uh, children's laureate, a post designed to raise the profile of children's literature, and he's received a knighthood for his services. So actually, we should be calling him Sir Quentin Blake. Um, now, if you've got any more questions, you can use this link below and they'll help you answer any more questions or get any more information. So, when you're producing your information text on Quentin Blake, don't forget to the key features you've got to include. Just like this example below, you must use headings and subheadings. You can use bullet points, keep the information short and snappy and try and grab people's attention. So. That's the end of the first lesson. I hope you enjoy it and I look forward to seeing your information texts. Goodbye.